I finished up all the fabrication on this guitar and I've already gone over and used some wood putty in some of the deeper uh, grooves in the guitar. So now what I'm going to do is um, take some Timbermate wood filler. I'm going to thin it out with some water to get it to kind of a melted peanut butter pudding like consistency and then use it to fill the green. So in about 10 minutes or so, I was able to do all the grain filling here. Uh, I ended up going a little bit thinner than even pudding, um, but that's all right. The whole goal of this is not to build up a thick film, but really just to fill in some of the uh, pores. And the thing to keep in mind is that the thicker you leave it, the more you have to sand off later. And so I've gone over this one time uh, I'm going to let it dry for a while. I'm going to go back to work. Uh, I'll come back in a couple hours, take a look and see what it looks like. Um, if I have to do it a second time, I will. Um, you'll also notice that I used, this is just a, a leftover um, health insurance card. Uh, I use that as a scraper. Uh, I even use my fingers for the, um, the cutaway areas. Uh, the great thing about the uh, timber meat is it's water soluble and so uh, even though it smells like band-aids um, it's not going to hurt your skin or anything and so uh, you can just go up wash with soap and water and be fine and so as i said i'll let this dry for a while and then uh, hopefully i'll be ready to move on to the next step in finishing it's been about two hours since i applied the grain filler and as you can see the appearance has taken on a chalky pink finish of course, the guitar is not going to stay pink. I'm going to sand off the majority of the green filler, uh, which will just leave it hopefully in the pores. And you can see that I've gone over the entire um, guitar where I'm going to be painting, including the maple neck. And so when you look online, there are some disagreements about whether or not you need to do filling on uh, tight green woods like maple. In this case, um, I defaulted to doing it anyway, just as a way to cover up any sanding mistakes I might have had. Um, certainly, you know, having a little bit more filler in any of those will make a smoother finish. Um, I was also concerned about the back of the neck not necessarily having the same sheen as the body because it wouldn't have the same um, undercoat preparation. And so I ended up putting it on there uh, as this video uh, continues on, we'll be able to see if that was a good idea or not. The random orbital sander made quick work, along with a little bit of uh, hand sanding in some of the tighter areas. Um, where you can really see the impact is if you look at the walnut strip here. And so you can see I've sanded back mostly, um, but you see the little pink streaks in there. And that's the green filler filling up the grain. And so by doing this now, um, when I go to do a coat of sanding sealer, the sanding sealer is going to incrementally lay on top of that. I'll be able to smooth that down. And then in theory, uh, it'll take fewer coats of the nitrocellulose uh, lacquer paint and clear coat um, so that I don't have a situation like I did on my great guitar build-off guitar where I ended up using two cans of clear uh, because I was having... Um, the finish sink in. You can see there's a lot of dust everywhere. I still need to sand the fretboard. I did not put any grain filler on the fretboard. And then in terms of the back, I'm actually pleased that I put um, the grain filler on there. If you read on the internet, it says you don't have to do that for, for woods like maple. Um, but as I did it, uh, it did sink down into some areas um, that I didn't realize I missed when I was sanding. And so little areas like that are now, you know, incrementally filled in a little bit better. Um, you know, I miss those with my 100 grit sanding. And so on balance, I think it's a net positive. Again, I'm gonna be painting this anyway. And so 
having a little pink uh, flex in it's not a huge deal. Um, but you know, I am getting closer and closer to a smooth body for painting. After I finished using the random orbital sander yesterday, I took the guitar inside, checked it over, um, did some really slight refinements just to make sure everything was good and smooth. And now that I'm happy with that, um, I moved out to my driveway and the next step I'm going to do um, is to use vinyl sealer. And so the vinyl sealer, um, besides being a sealer, actually builds up a little bit of a coat. Um, so this will also help smooth out any of the imperfections in the wood. Now you can see that I do not have the neck taped off and that's because I'm going to seal the fretboard as well. Last night I started sanding the fretboard and I didn't realize how much the fretboard had actually become discolored until the raw wood came out from underneath it. I'm going to be spraying a very thin coat of lacquer on the fretboard as well. And so by sealing it up with a vinyl sealer, um, hopefully what that'll do is so that I can use the lightest of, of lacquer coats. I'm, I'm going to do a mist coat first with the sealer and then a slightly heavier coat. Um, the directions say not to do more than two coats. Um, and certainly I'll, I'll believe them with that. And so hopefully I can lay this on pretty uh, smoothly. If not, the purpose of sanding sealer is to be able to sand it back and then I can move on to painting. Now that I have a heavier coat on, I'll let this sit for 15 to maybe 30 minutes while I eat lunch. And then once it's dry, I'll flip it over and then do the back side. I just finished up my wet coat of vinyl sealer. On the back of the can, it says it takes an hour to dry, or at least allow an hour to dry, uh, but it's been drying to the touch in about 15 minutes. And so I'm gonna let this coat dry. Uh, I have to go back to work anyway, and so this will likely sit for hours uh, before I use 320 grit to lightly um, smooth out uh, any of the vinyl sealer. With the body sanded to 320, the last step in my paint preparation is just to go over some of the fret ends here uh, to make sure that uh, they're smoothed out. If you saw my other video where I talked about um, the difficulties of carving the neck after you glue it to the body, you know, this is one of those annoying things. Um, I'm going to be shooting lacquer over the, the fretboard. And so I don't want to do any um, evening up of the frets to the uh, edges of the fretboard after that, because then I'd be I'd essentially be scraping off the lacquer again. And so what I want to do is just make sure everything is, is even to the edges. Uh, I can do the, uh, the fret work later where I'm doing, you know, all the angles and, and smoothing out the frets, um, because in that case, I do want to rub the lacquer off of the frets. Um, but here for the edges where the, the lacquer is going to go all the way up, to the fretboard and, and all the way across. I just wanna make sure I have everything smoothed out. So thanks for watching everyone. Uh, I'm gonna finish this up by just doing a quick time lapse of the, uh, the fret work. And then in the next video, uh, we'll be able to see what this looks like with some, uh, some paint on it. Mm -hmm.